Hello, Peru. We're thinking of you and your six billionaires and how they spend their cash. In a country of 33,755,661 people, Carlos Rodriguez Pastor is the richest, with a net worth of $5.3 billion in 2022. He inherited the top spot at Banco Internacional del Peru when his papi, Carlos Rodriguez Pastor Sr., passed away in 1995. His father bought Banco Internacional del Peru from the state for $54 million in 1994, and in 2022, the bank controls $3,767,364,370 in assets. Since then, Carlos Jr. saved and respent his inheritance and has become the majority owner, chairman, and CEO of Intergroup Financial, a Peruvian banking and retail group. Intergroup has a market cap of $113.4 million, and Carlos has got 4,737 employees under his watch. Carlos founded In Retail, a $3.8 billion holding company that owns many supermarkets, like Plaza Vea, Vivanda, Mass, and Macro, as well as pharmacies like Inca Pharma, Mi Pharma, and Quimica Suiza, as well as the real Plaza Mall chain. He bought an 11-room, $21 million NYC Fifth Avenue apartment from Toys R Us founder Charles Lazarus. 960 Fifth Avenue is known for being one of the co-ops with its owners having their noses in the air the highest. The snooty building considers you poor if you're worth less than $100 million, according to longtime 960 resident, broker Lawrence Kaiser IV. Now that's a rich guy's name if I've ever heard one. Carlos's Fifth Avenue apartment, just around the corner from the Metropolitan Museum and Guggenheim, has ten and a half foot ceilings, taller than an NBA regulation net. The ceiling has some classy raised moldings around the light fixtures and a combination of debonair marble floors and high gloss wood floors. The walls are glazed and have applied moldings as well. You switch between rooms using double French doors with beveled glass. His collection is housed in imported English antique pine cabinetry, which smells amazing by the way. While many New Yorkers might consider you rich if you don't have rats in your place, 960 residents expect to have two room master bathrooms. The kitchen has Vermont Verde marble countertops and Thassos marble floors. Thassos marble costs $20 per square foot for the raw materials alone. The butler pantry has cabinetry made of Honduran mahogany, which costs a hefty $10 per board foot, and is steadily climbing with that price of wood thing going on. Fifth Avenue is one of the most expensive streets to live on in the world, with an average rental price of $3,500 per square foot. That's the price for a full month's rent in this 3,336 square foot Parque Contra Brante Mora St. Isidro luxury flat. Of course, being in Peru, you're just not walking distance from Central Park there. But you're much closer to a lot of things that are much more beautiful. These days, Carlos is backing a blank check or special purpose acquisition company called Excelsia Acquisition Corp. He's hoping to raise upwards of $250 million from its initial public offering. He's going to use the dough to do his favorite thing, buy more Latin American businesses. The company is registered in the Cayman Islands, the Western world's tax haven. It's planning to sell 25 million units, made up of shares and warrants, at $10 a piece. Now that's how you prop up a shell company, folks. Carlos was born into wealth, and so living in society's upper crust is all he's ever known. That makes him extremely hush-hush about how he spends his billions. In his own words about his wealth, I don't see what the big deal is. We do know he has a mansion in Lima, Peru, although we don't know exactly where. Vito Rodriguez Rodriguez is the second richest man in Peru with a $1.4 billion fortune. In 1967, Vito and his brother Jorge founded Jose Rodriguez Banda S.A., a transport company that provided services for mining firms. In 1986, the brothers bought Gloria S.A., Peru's largest evaporated milk producer. Nestle, the $333.2 billion food services juggernaut, used to own 60% of Gloria S.A. That was until Peru's then-president Alan Garcia transferred ownership to Peruvian farmers, keeping some of the country's wealth internal. Presently, Vito and his brother have stakes in food companies in Argentina, Bolivia, Colombia, Puerto Rico, and Uruguay. In 2014, Vito and Jorge bought 51% of Saboche, Peru's largest cement producer, for $300 million. Saboche takes in around $233 million a year in revenue. 
Peru seems to be the place to be to buy a beautiful home at a reasonable price. While $2.8 million will buy you a fairly plain three-bedroom home in Toronto, that same amount will afford you this 17,222 square foot mansion in Casuarinas. It has a gorgeous terrace by the pool, and its kitchen has a $7,000 stainless steel Frigidaire side-by-side -side restaurant grade column refrigerator and freezer. Because of the mild weather, many rooms have floor-to-ceiling windows, letting in that Peruvian light, keeping your moods at that optimal level. No need to take those omega-3 fish body oils there. The inviting mahogany bar is at a country club level of opulence and is a great way to entertain. The walk-in closet is ergonomically organized, helping even the craziest clothes hoarder to feel normal. It also features a vanity makeup station for getting pretty before enjoying the Peruvian nightlife. Ana Maria Brescia Cafarata is the richest woman in Peru with a $1.5 billion fortune. The heiress inherited her deep pockets from her father, Fortunato Brescia Tassano, who earned his major breaks in real estate. Anna herself now owns 30% of Grupo Bresca, a Peruvian holding company with interests in agriculture, finance, hotels, mining, and of course, real estate. Grupo Bresca owns Tassa, one of the largest producers of fish meal in the world. Anna is media humble, so we're imposed that she should be posting Instagram pics riding through ancient Inca civilizations in a $226,000 drop-top Ferrari Portovino. And the thrill-seeking shouldn't stop there. The first lady of the Peruvian economy should ride amongst the 2,000-some-odd species of fish off the South Pacific coastline in a $563,000 Don Z43 ZR Black Widow powerboat, the Ferrari of the Seas. Nothing says boss lady like ripping past Peru pink dolphins in the Amazon River at a top nautical speed of 61 miles per hour. Chilean-born Iris Fontbona is the richest woman in South America with a net worth of $23.3 billion. Eduardo Hochschild, worth $1.1 billion in 2022, is the chairman of Hochschild Group, a Peru-based mining and industrial group which takes in $811.4 million in revenue a year. $71.1 million in net income, and has 3,587 employees. Eddie joined the business his great uncle started in 1987 and became head of the mining group in 1998. In 2002, chairs Hochschild Mining, a silver and gold mining business operating three underground mines, two located in Peru and one in Argentina. Hochschild Mining is currently worth $890 million. Silver today is at $25.26 per ounce. Gold is $1,949 an ounce. Fernando Belmont, worth $1.1 billion, is the founder and owner of Yenball Internacional, a fast-growing door-to-door cosmetics company with estimated sales of $800 million and operates in 10 countries. It's a multi-level pyramid-structured enterprise, sort of like Herbalife, where Juan sits at the top. Fernando and younger brother Eduardo used to run a jointly owned cosmetics firm before they dissolved their partnership in 1988. Oddly enough, they both run financially successful ventures separately and have almost the exact same net worth. This has given them the nickname of the Beauty Brothers. Juan Fernando has six expanded the firm to Spain and other Latin American countries with a large presence in Ecuador but still only operates in nine countries, whereas his brother operates in 16. Juan Fernando is a big golf player, one of the world's most expensive sports. The Lima Golf Course, which sits right in the middle of San Isidro, the way Central Park does in New York, has a green fee of $130 plus 26% taxes. The price is for nine or 18 holes. After a day of mid-city golf, Juan Fernando might hit up Central Restaurant, Lima's most expensive restaurant where everything is grown on site. It takes three hours and $209 per person to eat its 17-course meal. Add $104 for the Mundo Mater wine experience pairing, and you have yourself a night in culinary heaven. Sounds like a lot of money, but by many upper echelon standards, it's a cheap meal for what you get. Take New York's three Michelin star rated 11 Madison Park menu which will run you $335 per person for their 15-course vegan meal. Central's avant-garde chef, Virgilio Martinez, utilizes the Peruvian ingredients to the max. No easy feat as Peru is physically and extremely biodiverse as a country. 
Eating there is to eat the country, so to speak. CNN Travel rated Central as the fourth best restaurant in the world in 2016, number one being Osteria Francesca in Modena, Italy, whose 12-course tasting menu is 320 euros per person, or $354 US, plus $232 for the wine pairing. Something to think about if you're ever in the area. $1.1 billion Peruvian Eduardo Belmont Anderson is the owner and president of Belcorp, a door-to-door -door cosmetics company that has over 800,000 beauty consultants around the world to sell their Belcorp products from their homes and in their neighborhoods. And the company takes in $3.03 billion a year in revenue. Eduardo paid $14.6 billion for a waterfront home in Key Biscayne. The home resides at 610 South Master Drive in Florida. It's French Riviera property inspired and has seven bedrooms, six and a half bathrooms, and a private deck with a boat lift. It was originally built in 1969 as a 3,462 square foot home, and another 3,038 square feet were added on in 1987. The now 6,490 square foot home sits on a 15,000 square foot lot and was remodeled in 2019 to include more modern features, such as a glass wine cellar, a massive walk-in closet, and a gym. Eduardo had the kitchen outfitted with Gagano appliances, a $16,000 fridge, a $3,500 steam oven, a perfect execution chamber for a freshly caught lobster, a 70,400 series oven, and a $3,000 gas cooktop stove. Can't blame the appliances when the food is overcooked. Eric Fipper, chef and owner of NYC's three Michelin star rated restaurant Le Bernardin, uses Gagano appliances. Peruvian wealth keep their car collections private. I believe they should purchase something in Peru red though, like this $75,170 1974 Porsche 911 coupe with black interior. This would be the perfect car to drive across the country with the windows down to experience all 28 of Peru's climates. Death is literally around the corner on some Peruvian roads that lead to mines filled with precious minerals. While many working class folk use old $2,000 Nissan pickup trucks from the 90s to navigate one of the world's deadliest roads, Peru's elite could import a brand new $37,370 2022 Nissan Frontier Pro X. The 3.8 liter V6 has 310 horses and 2.81 pound feet of torque. While it's a decent off road truck, when you're worth 10 figures. You might as well go all out and import the ultimate off-roader. A $110,000 Land Rover Defender 110 P525 V8 Carpathian Edition. Jaguar Land Rover resurrected Land Rover Defenders at the Frankfurt Auto Show. It made a stellar first impression coming down that 45 degree angle ramp, making it look ready to handle the slopes in Peru's Andes. The Defender has all terrain progress control, great for those Winnie the Pooh days of wanting to do nothing. Using that mode, the computer will adjust your ride for you while you just steer and brake. You'll look cool in the Amazon rainforest in front of the red howler monkeys and sloths. And no one has to know the car's brain is doing all the adjusting. Brilliant. If you've got a need for speed, this 3.3 tonner will make you a chubby chaser as it hits 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds. And like Jesus, it can wade on the water at up to 35 inches. Just hope piranhas don't bite your premium $1,000 off-road tires. Top speed is limited to 119 miles per hour because of those off-road tires, though. Makes you wonder how fast this plaything can really go. This heavy Betty gets 18 miles per gallon at the pump, and gas prices in Peru are $5.436 per gallon, a full dollar higher than the average price per gallon in the U.S. in March of 2022. Yes, that's the trouble with fatty cars with big curb weights. They're always petrol hungry. The Defender is as tall as Michael Jordan at 77 inches and carries heavy items on its roof, up to 370 pounds. Loading it up and balancing your cargo is much more fun than playing Death Stranding. If you want to make an expedition out of it, you can actually glamp in the Defender. These Peruvian aristocrats keep their car collection secret, but I'm willing to bet there's a Rolls Royce somewhere in one of their garages. The $13 million Rolls-Royce Sweptail would be the perfect choice, as the coach-built car that took four years to put together says connoisseur loud and proud. If you love having things your way, a Rolls is right for you, as each vehicle is a blank canvas that you get to customize at a level that would make a pacifist go crazy. You get to choose from an obscene number of exterior colors, 44,000 shades to be exact. And if they don't have the color you like, they'll make a new color just for you. 
you get to choose the color of the threads for the interior, and not just the color of the leather, but the texture as well. You get to select if you're going to sit on alligator, crocodile, or even ostrich skin leather, amongst many others. You also get a personalized umbrella with your rolls. This must have been why the Penguin drove a diamond black $480,000 Rolls-Royce Cullinan black badge to the mayor's funeral in The Batman. When you buy a Rolls, you have to download the Rolls-Royce app on your phone as well as get every update to make sure you get the most out of your bespoke ride, as well as send the company all car data at all times. It also costs $3,500 annually just for general maintenance of the vehicle. The average Peruvian monthly salary is $454, so it would cost almost eight months' salary for a working-class Joe to afford basic upkeep on a double R. Peruvian billionaires aren't just limited to exotic cars for transport. Where they live is home to the Peruvian Paso, a $7,000 colt on average. This breed of riding horse has been declared a cultural heritage of the nation by the National Institute of Culture. Trujillo City in the north is considered to be the cradle of Peruvian horses. A prize-winning stallion like Ideal can go for up to $100,000. Many riders feel the Peruvian Paso is the Rolls-Royce of horses because it is the smoothest riding horse money can buy. Four hours south of Lima is a desert oasis called Huacachina where you can race sand buggies and pretend you're in Mad Max. It's $199 for the trip and $25 an hour for the buggy rental. You could buy your own $38,099 Can-Am Maverick X3 RS Turbo RR to really push your own private operation Desert Storm to the next level. You can also board down sand dunes. You can use a regular surfboard like a $750 Pizel Highline for the unique experience. Just don't fall off. The sandpaper effect will burn your skin. Since some of these fat cats live in the US, when visiting their birth country, they could enjoy it from a $500 a night penthouse in Villa Barranco by Anane Hotels. Its bathroom has skylights above the tub, and its rooftop terrace gives you a view of Peru sure to bring balance to your inner universe, at least for a moment. A wall in the middle of Peru's capital, Lima, has been dividing neighbors for decades. Some say the wall was built to prevent crime, while others agree that it's a wall of shame say it was a way to separate poor areas from the rich. Peru's six billionaires put together are worth just over $11 billion. As a country, Peru has an estimated total worth of $467 billion, holding 0.1% of the world's total wealth. Although its poverty rate is a punishing 21.7%, it is home to 33,000 millionaires and growing. In Latin America, Peru has the fifth most millionaires after Brazil, Mexico, Chile, and Colombia. 107 Peruvians are worth between $100 and $150 million, and 18 Peruvians are worth upwards of $500 million. There aren't too many billionaires in the world as it is. If you were at a game at the Big House, aka Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, Michigan, you know, where the Wolverines play, and 100,000 people were there, and the entire world was represented equally and accurately economically on a global scale, only three and a half of those 100,000 people